I don't know what this is about, but this next message is vaguely unnerving. It's a strange call from some... Well, I don't mean to be rude, but kind of an odd-sounding guy, you know? It's uh, a bit intense, really. Oh, Colin. Oh, Spike Pit. Like the mighty kings of old, you have wrestled with the dark visions presented before you in the Palantir. And you have mastered those dark forces, turning them to your will, not submitting to the will of the Dark Lord out there in the lands of shadow. You have wrought light where there was only darkness, brought understanding where before there was only chaos. You are the transition to the new age. And that is, of course, the man, the myth, the legend. It's Anthony, a.k.a. the rune slinger himself of Casting Shadows. And the man who's put together, along with his budski, this set of questions for RPG A Day this year and the eight years preceding this. I'll be answering more of his questions today and the next day and the day after that and the day after that and he's got into the spirit of things a little bit of a themed message relating to my well attempted bit of drama and comedy in my previous episode with the lord of the rings theme but we have got more more calls more answers and a bit more from the old slinger himself Question 19 Why has your favourite game stayed with you? 6th of June 2016 I transitioned back from board games and into RPGs specifically Dungeons and Dragons and the reason I mention this is because the way this happened is super pertinent to the question this idea of favourite RPG. Now, I don't have a favourite, and in fact, the reason I started playing D&D again was because, as I mentioned before, my brother and my son picked up the starter set and gave it to me. I can't remember if it was my birthday or Christmas, but it was a gift. A lot of the reason for that is because they wanted to play it. They knew I wanted to get into RPGs, and I can't remember now, but I guess we've been talking about it. My brother knew my history, uh, D&D being my first game, and I, I think that my son had probably seen some of the marketing and, and picked up on the hype, perhaps been on the internet, whatever. So he, he it got his interest. And I I thought it was it has been a really good addition for getting me back into it all. I think probably the reason it's the D and D brand is because that has remained constant. I I don't know if all of the other games out there are so recognisably constant and I sometimes wonder if that's why perhaps they shy away from making some of the major changes that they make are they conscious of bringing players back into the game and they want to have something that's recognisable maybe it seems like a fairly decent idea to me it's always a compromise it's the best fit for our group. So favourites don't especially come into it. It'd be really unusual, I think, for a whole group to have one game as their favourite, especially if they've played all different things and they've been playing for years. It's our most popular game. We've played hours and hours of it, roughly two to three hours a week since 2016. That's a lot of games. Everything else has been slotted in here and there on a much more sporadic basis. Most of the different games I've tried have been online or I've just played an older version of D&D. Now I'm getting into ICRPG, that's what I'm going to be running. Some people would say oh, it's basically house ruled d and I don't know, it uses a D20, it uses similar dice, it comes from D&D, but it, the more I look at it, the more I can see, yeah, it... it has changed quite a lot 
but it's still familiar enough for me to latch onto it and, and pick it up pretty easily so i'm looking forward to doing more of that don't really know if i've answered the question i feel like i have but is there is there something deeper there is it familiarity is it habit those could be factors i wonder sometimes when you've got these great big adventure books that take seem to take our group ages to play there's a kind of a a lock-in as well you almost become dependent am i dependent on it and keep returning to it for that reason i don't know i wonder about other people do people have favorite games it's that question that puts me in mind of an old customer of mine um, a welsh lady and she if you asked her what was her favorite flower she would always say the one that i'm looking at <laughs> And I think uh, I can I can identify with that for sure. The idea of favourites kind of ties back in with the perfect RPG. I put out a call for help, and they do say you've got to be careful what you wish for. I should have seen this coming, and I've got a couple of call-ins, opposite ends of the spectrum, totally conflicting advice. Good stuff food for thought but you see this is precisely why i struggle to come to a conclusion and i remain colin the conflicted or if you prefer and you can't decide conflicted colin would do which is the best which of those is perfect uh, I don't know. hey colin jason here i hear you asking for help but when the prompt is, what is your fa what is your perfect role-playing game? Unfortunately, you've got to answer that. So it's really not about the group. I mean, there is a perfect role-playing game for you and your group. There's no question about that. And if you only ever play with one group, then, you know, they may be the same thing. But really, you have to decide for Colin, what is Colin's perfect game? What world does Colin want to adventure in? What power level does Colin want to be at? And what sort of mechanisms does Colin enjoy interacting with? So, as much as I would love to help you, all I can do is say those things. Good luck in figuring it out. Hey there, it's Kevin calling in from the Red Caps. Hopefully you don't mind me playing along with RPG A Day, or at least this one particular entry anyway, with you rather than doing it on my podcast. But the answer for what is the perfect game for me that's not a rule set it's not uh anything like that a perfect game is a situation where everybody that you're playing with clicks with what's going on everybody has that shared imagination uh that shared memory that you walk away from the table at the end of that session and everybody has it in their head like it really happened to them. And when they're talking about it years later, they're like, do you remember when you did this? Not when your character did this, when you did this. And everybody's bought into that shared collective memory and it feels like they were there doing the actions in the game. That's the perfect game. I hope everybody gets that feeling at least once. Anyhow, keep up the great work. Conspiring then to keep me confused is Jason of Nerds RPG Variety Cast and Kevin of the Red Caps Podcast. Very valid points from both of them. But it's not that simple. I, I've got to say, I tend a little bit more towards what Kevin's saying because whilst Jason's not wrong, I don't really need to decide. And... I sort of question the value of me making this decision independently because with the best will in the world unless I'm going to play on my own uh, you know what good is it coming to that decision uh, am I just going to set myself up for being disappointed I like to stay flexible but I think it's definitely worth doing that little bit of self-analysis to narrow in your focus and, and perhaps get some goals set down so that if you are looking to put a game together you 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 have given it the necessary thought and you've done a bit of planning and by considering your plan hopefully 
you're going to improve your chance of success insofar as meeting your goals. At the same time, Kevin's very convincing argument there. It is, it is collaboration. This is a team game. There's no I in team. Now, you see my predicament. It's, it's terrible, isn't it? How do you make these decisions? And this isn't the end of it. It gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. But I'm going to park it there for now. We will come to some more call-ins later in this episode. Question 20. How long do your games last? Well, if you're playing 5th edition and you're using what's his shoddily constructed books, this could be a matter of weeks because in that time, probably most of the pages will fall out of your rule books. And unless you've got an electronic backup, then you haven't got any books to play with and you've got to find another $50 to replace your PHB or your DMG or your monster manual. Joking aside, one of the things I like about these questions is the way that you can answer them in different ways. And I've got a few ways of answering this question. Previously, I've mentioned that we've been playing since 2016 again and that sessions are roughly three hours a week. Sometimes three and a half sometimes a bit less than free that's been com- comfortable for us on a regular basis and it did drop down to a slightly s- shorter session when we played online i think everybody found it a little bit more tiring but that may have just been the circumstances of covid19 who knows the other way you can think about it is how long does a campaign last if indeed you're playing a campaign campaign and you're not running one shots i've talked about this idea that i quite like to have a window of time set aside maybe 10 or 12 weeks when i'm running it gives me something to aim for and and plan a bit of a story arc now this isn't rigid it also gives people an out an easy out and that's the the main reason for it both parties after 10 to 12 weeks you can always come back sit around the table and say okay our projected run is over do we want to carry on do another say three months or do we want someone else to run without these little checkpoints i think it can be socially a little bit difficult swapping out who's running a game particularly if they're enjoying themselves if you if you suggest you fancy a little bit of a change they could take that a little bit personally i'm not saying in our group they would but i can see that happening so there is that and then some people are playing that rolling on and on and on and that tends to be what we do we've we've played for so long we take ages to get through books once i get into a setting we start generating all this other stuff and it kind of takes on a life of its own. Like, I started off running Tomb of Annihilation. I mean, I got rid of the Death Curse. I've kind of, there's no real mention of the tomb. And we're just adventuring in the, in the jungle, in the jungles of Chult. It's taken on a whole life of its own. I'm, I'm using the locations, the characters, a load of the ideas. But I've added so much other stuff in there. It's just taken on a life of its own. And I can't, I've got no planned ending. It's just this massive big story arc. Now, it's a beer moth of a, of a creation. And that's just how it seems to go for me. I started the same with the... The, the stuff around Fandolin, Fandolin and Cragmore and the Lost Mines of Fandelven, this area in the uh, the realms. I never played in the Forgotten Realms and this meant I, I felt a certain freedom with what I did. I ended up bringing in Alfheim from Mistara and oh, all, all sorts of stuff. I mashed in the... Um, the stuff out of the horde of a dragon queen and and when you start doing this things just it 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 naturally takes on a life of its own i find 
So how long's a game? How long's a piece of string? Hey Collins, Anthony calling from the car. <laughs> the question about what is your perfect game? Yeah, that's an interesting question, right? Perfection is quite a word. Um, in my time in martial arts, I have had an interesting experience where, as a beginner, it was brought up to me that, kind of like, don't worry, perfection is attainable. You know, as you're, you're a beginner, you can't do anything right, you're looking around uh, the school and seeing people that have been there longer, performing amazing things, and you think, you know, I'm how long will it take for me to get there or I'll never be able to do that that kind of stuff and then there's this soothing balm of don't worry perfection is attainable and then some years pass and you look around the room and and you see how many newcomers there are standing behind you and they're all looking at you and you you realize that they're thinking things like I'll never be able to do that and you know, how long is it going to take before I can stand there? And those questions. And, and you kind of smile. And then the teacher comes by and says, Don't worry. <laughs> Perfection is attainable. <laughs> and no matter how far along the path you travel, that, that idea, that comforting and humbling idea is there to support. Don't worry perfection is attainable. As you rise in skill, you begin to see more elements that can be worked on. And it's interesting. So out there in RPG land, people have taken this question and answered it with a game. My perfect game is, I don't know, Dark Conspiracy. And some people gave reasons. You know, my favorite game is uh, Paranoia. Ha ha. Because, and they give their, their reasons about why it's the, the best game ever. And other people have talked about the process of play. Like, my perfect game has, you know, this type of, of person involved with it, or this number of people involved with it, in this kind of location, uh, in this kind of, of genre, or whatever. Uh, other people have talked wistfully about what they think might be perfect, while others look back fondly on what was perfect and never came again. And of course, a great number of people rejected the notion of perfection and settled for merely great. And some settled for just good. Some settled for good enough. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The prompts are there as inspiration. What answer do you find yourself enjoying explaining? And I think that's the road to travel down. In that direction, in terms of answering the question, perfection is attainable. Great episode. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Some great calls in this episode. And before I address Anthony's call, it seems super appropriate that he talks about journeys as he's stuck in his car flying along the road there. Uh, I hope, I hope it wasn't too long and tedious. It does sound that Anthony is a bit frustrated with his driving at times and I can sympathise. Thankfully, now I live real close to where I work and it's a bike ride and I'm really enjoying the the liberation that cycling brings that little bit of independence as you freewheel along we'll see what I think when the winter hits and it gets wet and horrible could be a totally different story then but this theme of journeys yeah it, for me I, I think I am a little bit decided on perfection being somewhat unattainable but I'm happy to strive for it it's always been the case that throughout life as I've felt I know more about something it just reveals that 
there is way more and I get more of an understanding and I realise how little I actually know. It's a bit of a trap for beginners to kind of come across as though they're some kind of expert when they're just starting out on a road and I, I chuckle to myself listening to talk like that in various spheres of interest rpgs no exception when you feel like you're flagging and i've done this with my son he gets frustrated with his drawing when you're flagging look back and see how far you've come it's why i find it painful to listen to my early podcasts Uh, well i find i find it often painful to listen to my recent podcasts i do feel that i've developed as a podcaster i mean nearly 500 episodes in one would like to think that you pick up a thing or two one of the things that led to me wanting a change of career was it just became a bit too easy i could do it in my sleep and i needed something with a bit more meat on the bone that i, that I could get into and i set myself the challenge of of teaching and people talk about teaching in terms of multiple lifetimes being required to kind of get any kind of mastery and going in in my late 40s I know that is virtually unattainable well not virtually how am I going to achieve what many experts regard as multiple lifetimes of effort I'm not going to achieve that if everything's too easy where you know where's the satisfaction in that And there you go, that is a wrap. A big thanks goes out to the pit crew, the generous folks supporting my endeavours over on Spike Pit Patreon, and a big thanks goes out to you, the listener, for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to old Spike Pit. Take care, and I'll catch you later.